Yes, yes, uh, Brother Conyers. What, what, right. what book well, what first, let me, I don't have them in front of me, but let me just mention some of the classics that are always timely, and I think everybody should get those books. Certainly, Chancellor Williams' book, Destruction of Black Civilization. It is a classic work, and everybody should read that work. Gives you a good foundation, and it will lead you to other places. Certainly, J.G. Jackson's Introduction to African Civilization. Still timely, still valuable information. Those are some of the classic works that people should read, among many, many, many other classics. Too many to list and name right now. But some of the books that I just grabbed off the shelf that I would recommend people read, certainly Barbara Adams' biography of Dr. John Henry Clark, Master Teacher. People who want to learn something about this great teacher who influenced generations and generations of us should pick up this book along with other books. Mm. Who's the press? Who's the uh, publisher of that book? The publisher is A and B Publishers Group, mm -hmm. and I would recommend that everybody who wants to have a background and an understanding of the importance of Dr. John Henry Clark simply just pick up this book first, and then this book will lead them to other books. Handsome young man there. Yes, when he was very very young, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, I also recommend that people pick up any book by Ayikwe Ama. I have two in front of me. Mm -hmm. Spell the name please for us. A-Y-I-K-W-E-I-A-R-M-A-S. -E excuse me, A-R-M-A-H. This particular book is called The Healers. Subject matter? Well, I, I, I like, I won't say, I like people to pick this up and read oh, okay. it. Okay. But All the right. title indicates what it's about, okay? This book here, Soul Force, by Lynette Barrett, still timely. The subtitle is The African Heritage and African American and Afro American Religion. Mm -hmm. Still timely. Mm -hmm. and and these are readily available? This would be readily available? Uh, they should be. And if not, you can certainly go online and find them from some, you know, book house, some publisher. Primarily an African-American publisher or an African-American book site would have this book. Here's a more recent book, right? Robin Walker in England. It's called When We Ruled. And by and large, it's about the history of African people. And it dispels a lot of myths about African people, especially myths concerning Egypt being a non-African civilization. I say they got Nubia right there on the cover. Isn't that also sort of like a... Well, this, this, is, this is Queen T, mm -hmm. right on the cover. This is the mother of the king, Pharaoh Nasut Akhenaten, also known as Amenhotep IV. If anybody wants to understand <clears throat> the relationship between wealth and race, or economics and race, this is one good book here among many. Well, that's a timely subject these days. Right. The Color of Wealth. And the subtitle is The Story Behind the U.S. Racial Wealth Divide. And again, who's this publisher? Uh, the publisher of this is uh, The New Press. Now, does this have an editor or, or an author? It has five authors. There's a chapter by an author from a different racial and ethnic background. For instance, the first chapter is on Native Americans and their history in this country. The second chapter is on African Americans. So the, the author of that is an African American. Here's some of the names. And I hope I can pronounce them. Mesu Mui, which is Chinese or Asian. Barbara Robles, who does, I guess, the uh, Latino or Hispanic side. Betsy Leonor Wright. Rose Brewer. And Rebecca Adamson. So all of these take Native Americans, African Americans, Latinos, Asians, and talks about the wealth gap. And why, how and why the wealth gap developed. Mm, may I see the uh, back cover in the back of uh, the book? I just like to see all these words. I'm a word guy, right. you know what I mean, like that. I don't know, I just want to see if well, I guess I can't get that in focus. Oh, well, that's life. Mm -hmm. 
Any other books you want to turn us on to? Is that, is that there a good are so start? many. I don't know where to begin. Well, let's leave it. Well, there. let's just well, well, let's not forget Sheikh Antadia. Of course. Oh, huh, huh. The African origins. The African Senegalese. Right. The African origins of civilization, myth or reality. That's one book that everybody probably should begin with. Another one, the cultural unity of Africa. Sheikh Antadia. Can you spell uh, Sheikh Antadia? I know we, we can go through this. C H E I K H A N T A D I O P. So, anything else you want to uh, end us with? Uh, you know, you, you've given us a, a, just a tiny, oh, we only, you know, history is so vast. Um, well, let me ask you this. They're, they're saying that you can, you can study history, say, for instance, through military movements. Uh, you can study history through um, to uh, uh, commerce, of course. Right. What's a good What's a good path for the for the uninitiated, for the person that's not a military person, or for the person that would study history in general? Don't worry about that. When you begin studying history in general, all of those different roads and paths, you'll eventually tread down those paths. You know, people who begin studying history are often overwhelmed and baffled by the fact that where do I begin? What should I pick up first? I myself had those same questions. What I'm now telling students is begin studying your history. Pick up a book on your history and your culture, and that will lead you everywhere. What I say to students is not only study history and not only study culture, learn something about everything, not just history and culture, about everything, math, science, Everything. Why? Because everything in the known universe is interrelated. The more you learn about yourself, the more you become, what our ancient ancestors say, you become godlike. One of the earliest statements that came out of Egypt was, man, know yourself. And we dare say, man and woman, know yourself. The more you know about yourself, the more you transcend the mundane, and the more you become, quote unquote, godlike, knowledgeable. And we have to keep in mind that knowledge makes you dangerous. The more knowledge you have, the more dangerous you become, especially the people who don't have knowledge. So we must be aware of people who will say something like this. You think you know everything. Never be dismayed by that because that's more of an indictment on them than it is on you. All right? Or people who say, stop using big words. There's no such thing as a big word. If you don't know what the word means, go look it up. It won't be big to you anymore. Even if you can't remember what it means after you find it. So, learn something about everything. Even things you're not interested in. You never know when that information will help you. You never know when it will help you even get a job. Just by impressing the boss with something the boss thought you couldn't possibly know. And again, it will make you dangerous. People will tend to back off you in a debate. Out of respect for what you know, even if you don't know anything about what they happen to be talking about at that point in time, they might not want to take a chance that you might know more than they do. Thank you so much, Dr. James Conyers, for, uh, formerly of the Low East Side. What, what project was that? D, what, what, what project was that you, you grew up in? I, I grew up in Barouche projects, but I, I lived in Barouche and in the Lillian Wall projects. Mm -hmm. But it's right across the street. All three projects, Barouche, Lillian Wall, and Jacob Reese are all a part of what we call Avenue D. They're only a street apart. So it's, in essence, what you have is one continuous project from Delancey Street all the way to 14th Street. Thanks so much. You're welcome.